Right, now this harmless looking little two lines of writing there is actually quite important because it's explaining what a logarithm actually is. Now this is where people usually fall apart. Logarithms, they think it's just some sort of, you've got to memorize the technique and do this and that. But once you understand what they actually are, it's not quite as nasty. So we have, if x equals, we're going to do an example next to this so we can make some sense of it. a to the n, right? If x equals a to the n. So if 9 equals 3 squared, right? Does that make sense? If x equals a to the n, then log to the base a of x is n. So over here, this would be log to the base 3 of 9 is 2. Now, we don't use log to the base 3 very often. That's a fairly unusual log. We usually only use log to the base 10 or log to the base e, which is a special number that happens to have unusual pro or special properties when it comes to powers. So you'll find they're the only logs that you see on your calculator. They're the only ones that you have. You've got log to the base 10 or log to the base e. So what's a log to the base 10 look like? That means the A, see that, this is the base, the A is actually the base, so the A has to be a 10. So if I had something like 100 equals 10 squared, so x equals a to the n, that's what I just drew, x, x equals a to the n, so 100 equals 10 squared, so log to the base 10 of um, x, 100, equals 2. So what is a logarithm? A logarithm is the power that you need to apply to that base to get that number. So in other words, what power do I need in my base? So if I'm in if I'm working in logarithm base 10, let's assume assume from now on that I'm only working in base 10, right? So if I'm working in logarithm base 10, then what is my logarithm? It's the power that I have to put 10 to to get that number. So if I had the number 64, and I said, what's the logarithm of 64? It's, what does 10 have to go to to get 64? That's the question. What do I have to do to 10 to get 64? And that is the logarithm. All right. Now we're going to um, come back to this little explanation quite often because this helps us to keep a clear picture on what a logarithm is. If x equals a to the n, then log to the base a of x equals n. The only calculator you can do this is at 64 there. I want to know what is the logarithm of um, 64. We've got two different logarithms here. We've got a log, L-O-G, that's log to the base 10, and you've got log L-N, which is log to the base E. So I'm going to be log to the base 10, so I've got 64. Now log to the base 10 is 1.806, da, da, da. So if I go 10 to the power of this number here, 1.806, so 10 to the power of 1.806, 806 should give me 64. Do you think it will? Let's find out. 
we're going to use the power this time, which is the x to the y, so 10 to the power of 1.806 equals 63.973. So there you go, it's supposed to be 64. If I used a few more decimal places, I'm going to use 4. Uh, if I'd have done a bit more accurate, like 1,000 decimal places we got there, let's write again. And to the power of equals. There we go. That's nice and accurate. All right. So a logarithm is like a reverse power. What would have the power needed to be of on a ten to give me my number sixty-four? What power did I need to give me sixty? All right. Now, an anti-logarithm, a reverse logarithm, is is to go 10 to the log. So if you've got the logarithm and you want to find out what the original number is, you just go 10 to the end of that number. So I had my logarithm, this was 1.8, and reverse logarithm, or anti-logarithm, as I call it, would be 10 to the power of 1.8, which gives me 64. All right. So we're going to kind of keep returning to that just make sure we don't lose it as far as what is a logarithm actually supposed to mean. I'm losing it. Where's my page? Oh, I shut it. Oh, done. So now we might be ready for uh, the next topic here, which was diving straight into logarithms. So there's the indices stuff, and now logarithms to base e. Now we just did a whole bunch of base 10 logarithms. Now what about base e? Now e is a special number, and it's um, 2.718. It's a bit like pi. Pi, you know, it's got the decimal places going forever. Well, so does e. If you want to. Um, Know the number of decimal places of e, it goes on forever. So it's interesting. So we have a um, log to the base e button on most calculators is ln, so that's this one here. Right at the bottom. So if I had 64 and I did an ln of it, that would be what do I have to do? What power do I have to do e to? So it would be 2.718 to the power of 4.155888 equals um, 64. Let's try that. So here, so we've got a letter E here sitting in the calculator, which is nice. And um, it's usually hiding somewhere. Yeah, it's on the calculator. It would be alpha and times 10 to the power. Middle button on the bottom on the Casio. And that's E uh, to uh, pretty good accuracy. So e to the power of equals um, 64, and the number we need to power is. I can do it. I just did that. Okay, do it again. So um, 64 ln is four point. That's the number. So if I have e to the power of that number, yeah. E to the power of that was sixty-four. <clears throat> so we can do base E and base ten. Why do we use base E? Um, well, because base E has got some special properties. Um, as far as um, it's kind of like a, it's it's called the natural number for logarithms. <clears throat> Not sure if you've ever seen it. There's a T-shirt that um, uni students wear that says the number one or something and uses e to the power of e to the one or some something like that and the whole thing equals one. Anyway, 
So um, on your calculator, just try some of these out. So logarithm of 3.2 times 4, blah, 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 just playing out numbers in the calculator. It's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> and now um, log of 50 divided by of 10 divided by, I don't know why you want to do that. It's kind of funny expression going in there. All right, now this is the bit that we want to see next. So these are these are laws about logarithms. Now this is what I was talking about earlier. If you want uh, two numbers uh, multiplied together, if you take the logarithm of one and you can then add the logarithm of b. So look at this. If I if I'm trying to find a times b's logarithm, I can just get the logarithm of a and add. B. Why does that happen? Because logarithms are essentially the indice of the number. And the number being 10 because we've got LOG, not LN. So if we know that um, the log of 3 is 0.477, so 10 to the power of 0.477 equals 3, what's the logarithm of 30? Well, since 30 is three lots of um, three lots of 10, logarithm of to the base 10 of 10. What's the logarithm of base 10 of 10? That's what power do I have to raise 10 to to give me 10? Well, the answer is one. So log to the base 10 of 10 is one. In fact, that will work for everything. Log to the base e of e is one. So. Uh, we get 1.477. Now, this is another. This is probably the second most important rule of this chapter. Uh, it's the change of base rule. So I'm going to look at this one now. Uh, changing base would be classically changing from base 10 to, to base e or the other way around. <clears throat> All right, so this is another uh, important formula for logarithm. So log to the base B of A. Now, log to the base b is just some random log, uh, some random base, so we don't know what it is. And that's equal to, now we can use whatever log base we want to use. So we'll just pick 10 because that's a pretty popular one of a over log to the base 10 of b. All right, so this simple little formula, but very useful. So that's the second important thing for this chapter. This is change of base. In there. Change of base. So uh, what would we do? Look, for example, if we had uh, log to base three, you're you. Are you up with Gumtree if you've got log to the base 3? Because your calculator only does log to the base 10 or log to the base e. That's it. Can't do any other logs. So what do you do if you get a log to the base 3? You're going to have to modify it around to um, solve it. So we've got one here. Log to the base 3. Oh, I'm trying to solve. Base three of uh, of six. So what do you have to do? That? I wonder if it's a problem. Okay, we can have it. So what's the log to base three of six mean? How would I read this? This actually reads. What do I have to do to 3 to give me 6? So 3 to the what equals 6? That's the log. That's what that means. So whatever 
So that equals something we don't know what it is. When I do the logarithm to the base three of six, what I'm saying is, what do I have to power three to to get six? All right, well, I can't do base three because there's no logarithm base three calculators around, so I have to convert it over to another logarithm. So I could use base 10. So let's do log. I don't actually have to write base 10 because log means base 10. That's base 10 is L-O-G. And when we're using base E, it's L-N. All right, so log of 6 divided by log of 3. All right, so now we can get the calculator. So we got uh, 6 log, is that number, and 3 log. Six log minus the three log. Oh, sorry, divided by six log divided by three log equals one point six. So our answer is one point six oh nine. Do we know if that's true? How do we know if that's true? Well, three to the one point six oh nine should give us. 6. Let's see if that works. Let's I'll do it accurately. 3 to the power of 1.3, 1 1 1.63, I'll write that one. No, Three to the power of one point six equals there we go six. So that's how the um, change of base works. Uh, we normally use the base ten, but it doesn't matter. You can use base E if you want. It doesn't make any difference. Exact same thing with base E. Let's try that. It's also the same as because the base E is also on the calculator, so that's an option. L N six over L. This time. <clears throat> so um, I'll do ln three first. Three log to the base e. Set number. We have it in memory. And six log to the base e of six is that divided by log to the base. E of 3 equals 1.6309. Look, it's exactly the same as we had before. And that's because uh, <clears throat> they cancel each other out. So it doesn't matter which log we use, but we only have two choices anyway. We can use a base 10 log, which is LOG, or we can use a base E log, which is LN. That's it. There's no other logs on the calculator. So if you've got a log that isn't in one of those bases, 10s and E's, then you have to use this change of base formula where you divide one by the other. That's how we use change of base. Fairly important little equation, that one. All right, got a few exercises there. <clears throat> yeah, as it says here, you could also use the log to base E if you wanted to. It makes no difference. Now we start looking at um, at formulas. You always have a decision to make when, when it comes to formulas. Should you uh, work with logarithms or should you work with powers? Because that's your choice. A logarithm is actually a power. And if you look at this first exercise here, log to base ten of two x. Now we've got a variable in there, x. So we've, we've got rid of our numbers. So you can't jump on your calculator and solve this one because We've got an x in the middle of this. 
But we're going log to the base 10 of 2x equals 3.5. So obviously we're trying to find out what x is. What am I going to do with this log to the base 10 of 2x? Because I can't put that in my calculator because there's an x there. So I need to get rid of this log to the base 10, get that over the other side. How do you get a log over the other side? Well, that's where this comes in. You see, log to the base a of x equals n is the same as saying x equals base n. So we're using this. This is really the definition of a logarithm. So when we say log to the base 10 of 2x, see we can put each one of these into here. So log to the base 10, so the a is a 10, so we make that a a 10, right? And of x, now our x is 2x, so where it says x, we write 2x, equals 3.5, so 3.5 is our power. Right, so that's why we end up with 2x equals 10, a is a 10, because log of base 10, to the 3.5. So 2x, we had log to base 10 of 2x is 3. So 2x, that's the x, log to base 10 of 2x. That's my x. That's my a. That's my n. All right, so 2x equals a 10 to the n, 3.5. 2x equals 10 to 3.5. So x is obviously half of. Okay, now we can do calculator because this is all numbers. We can throw this in the calculator. So you're going to tend to use this quite a bit if you um, have something with logarithms in it. Now you can turn it into a power just by using this equation, which is really the definition of a logarithm. So it's 10. We have 3.5. We have a button for that, so 3.5. 10 to the 3.5, that big number, divided by 2, we get 1581. Here's our solution. Uh, yeah, 1581, 1580. <coughs> Okay, so um, change of base and change from logarithms to powers. You can flip from one to the other at any time. If you don't like your power, you can go to logarithms. If you don't like your logarithms, go to power. Get back up. I did skip over a bit here at the beginning because I wanted to really cover this sort of stuff to change of base, and then we'll go back up and have a look at some of these more ordinary algebra type questions. This one here. Doing simplification using the uh, logarithm rules. Remember, logarithms are indices, so when you're multiplying. Uh, the indices you get, uh, you just add the logarithms together. And dividing, you subtract. And if you're using a power, you multiply. And that's basically it. Just the same rules as the indices. Because that's what a logarithm is. It's an indice of a certain base. Um, which, that one we did already. So simplify L equals log to the base 2 of 6 plus log to the base 2 of 2, plus log to the base 2 of 2 thirds. All right, so we're trying to add all these logarithms together. All right, and then trying to simplify it. But 
if I'm getting a logarithm of something and adding to it a logarithm of another number, they're all base 2, so that's the same as log to the base 2 of the 6 times 2 times 2 thirds, because multiplying the number is the same as adding the logarithm. So if I'm doing the logarithm of the product, it's the same as taking the logarithms and adding them together. So I can add them when I've logged them, or I can multiply them before I log them. That's the same as the same answer. Alright, but 6 times 2 is 12 times 2 thirds is an 8, so now we've got log to the base 2 of 8, which says, what do I have to power 2 to give me 8? Oh, I know the answer, it's already 3, so it rounds off to an easy number. Uh, another similar one, another one which is base 2 this time, uh, which we had before. <coughs> Not that we ever use log to base 2, but we don't need to use the calculator here because log to base 2 48 minus log to base subtracting logarithms is divided by 48 divided by 6 is 8, log to base 2 of 8 is 3 again. Look at this one. We've got 12, these are all base 2, so it's 12 minus minus. Alright, so we've got 12 minus. Now uh, we're putting it in brackets 8 plus, if we add those, we multiply those together, 8 times 1.5 is um, is 12 as well, so it gets 8 minus 12, so that's a sneaky way of finding out what, I would have been a bit stuck there trying to work out what to do with the 1.5 of there, <coughs> but it would be 12 minus 8, which gives you um, that would be it. Oh, what's it? It's eight times one point five. <clears throat> so they would get twelve divided by eight, which is two thirds, divided by one point five, which is uh, which is one, and that will give you. Of zero. So you could have done it the other way. Let's have a look at this ugly looking thing. Simplify log to the base uh, square root of e times e squared. Now the square root of e is e to the half and times e squared. Now when you multiply those two together you get um, e to the 2.5 and because that's a power we're using this rule here that one log e to the 2.5 is that many lots of the log so you get two and a half lots of ln e but ln e is one log to the base e of e is one log to the base 10 of 10 is one because what power do I do the base to to give me the base? Power is 1. So you end up with 2.5. So a few formulas there to um, look around with. These are calculations. Change your base, which you already did. And then there's some examples in here. That'd be... Um, Just going to the exponential. Okay, we've done those ones. All right, we'll just have a look at exponential equations. Here we have um, powers. We're trying to find what value should x be four to something equals eight. What, do you, what power do you have to do four to give me eight? How do we do that? Well, let's have a look at that one for a sec. So we got four to the x equals eight. Now they kind of trick their way through that one, which is kind of cheating a bit. I don't like maths when they just find a trick, because how are you going to remember that? Let's see if there's any other brute force way, way we can answer that question. At least we don't have to memorize things then. 4 to the x equals 8. How do I solve that? Alright. Does that look familiar to anything? 
Better to get back into the i to the x equals i to the n. It should be similar, doesn't it? So this one was x equals i to the n and of plus i x equals n. So that's our magic rule. That's the definition of a, of a logarithm. Now over here we have a, so 4 is our a, 8 is our x, and x is our n. So we've really got log to the base 4 of 8 equals x. So we're trying to find log to the base 4 or 8 to solve that equation. Can we do log to the base 4? No, because that's a not uh, that's not a logarithm on your calculator. You can only do tens or e's. But we can do log to the base 10 of 8 divided by log to the base 10 of 4. And that comes from the change of base formula. A log to the base b of a is log to the base 10 of a over log to the base 10 of b. So this is log to the base 10 of 8, log to the base 10 of 4. Now we can do another calculator. So log to the base 4 of 8 is 1.5. Log to the base 4 Now what did we use to solve that equation? We used our two famous equations. The logarithm equation, which is that one, definition of the logarithm. And the other one was change of base formula. Definitely the most important formulas for this topic. Let me just use those two formulas, which happens to be nothing like the way they solved their one because they um, trick themselves around and come up with some little fancy tricks, which is kind of like mathematical magic, which I don't care about because who cares if you come up with a trick? How about you just solve it with your standard formulas? All right, 4 to the x equals 9 standard formula again. Hey, they can do this standard formulas for all of these ones. Instead of these super fancy tricks and traps. All right, change of subject. Now that's another area where um, this is probably the main area where um, engineers are going to be scratching their heads a bit and have a logarithm in the formula, and they're trying to change the subject. They're trying to make something else power. Most of the time, though, you're going to manage this using our first formula, the x equals a to the n definition of a logarithm. Right, so this is where we're going to spend most of our time. We'll have a look at a couple of these and then um, carry on next time. <clears throat> Alright, so changing subject, log to base 10 of x minus 2 equals y. We're trying to find, well, it'll tell you the subject you're trying to get. We're trying to find x. So x, at the moment, the subject is y. So y equals blah, blah, blah. But what if I want to know x? All right, so we're going to use now. What, what did we do between that step and that step? What was it, what, what happened? How did we know to do that from this? That comes from this one. So we had log to base a of x equals n, and we rearranged it into x equals a to the n. So x, which is x minus two, equals a log to base ten. That's a is the ten to the n, which is y. So x minus 2 equals 10 and y. So just get rid of the 2 and x equals 10 to the y plus 2. So it's actually a fairly simple uh, readjustment using the definition of a logarithm. 
x equals a to the n, then log to the base a of x equals n. So, yeah, I told you I'd be saying this all the way through the subject until you memorize in your sleep. Um, now this one we're using log to base e, doesn't really change anything. We're adding two logarithms together, which means we can multiply the letters. We're trying to get t out of here. Now that we've got log, we can then reverse it using the definition of a logarithm again, same formula, and it switches it around to a power. All right, so how does this go? Log to the base e of x equals n. So s is n. So x, 2t, that's this bit in here, that's x x equals e, because that was log to base e, so e to the s. So divide by t, uh, divide by 2 gives us t equals uh, e to the s. What about this little fellow? That looks a lot like an engineering formula, like maybe uh, temperature or something. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here, we're trying to get t out of there, which is really annoying because t is hiding right up there inside the indice. All right, so um, we're just trying to get everything off here so that we can uh, get to our T. So let's get rid of some rubbish here. Get rid of that PO, so that's multiplied, divide by PO. That's step number one. Now we've got E to the power. E to the power from reverse and E to the power by taking logarithms. So what we're really doing is taking logarithms on each side. Um, so logarithm of this equals Logarithm of E is um, gets rid of the E. So instead of being powered, it's now just the indice. <clears throat> so we end up with just the indice on this side. So E to the something, if I logarithm that, it's just the something. Uh, if you were to write that as a rule, you'd say something like the logarithm of e to x equals x. Or the logarithm in base 10, log 10 to x equals x. So it's just showing you that power and logarithm are opposites of each other. So that's how we got to that step there. And now we're still trying to get t out, so get rid of the 1.03. So we just divide that side by 1.03. So 1.03 underneath is the same as 9.71 on the top. Not really any difference between those two ones. Now up here I have another one, a little bit uglier because we got a negative on our indice, but let's see what difference that makes. Not a real lot. <clears throat> All right, first of all, we'll get rid of the point 0.5. So we have that equals e to the something. And um, because we're dividing by point 0.5, that's the same as multiplying by 2. So we're just simplifying it back down to here. Now we're ready to take logarithms to both sides using this rule here. Um, we take the logarithm 2e, that's just the logarithm 2e, 2i. Uh, but if we take the logarithm of e to the 1 over r, it gets rid of the e, we just end up with... Um, one over r. Is there one? That's oh, a t over r. There's a t on the top there. All right, so therefore uh, t, now we then multiply the r over that side, we get t, so that number there. Still going. We're trying to get t out of this one. All right, get rid of the y first. These are all engineering formulas, quite obviously. Divide that y naught. And then take logarithms of both sides uh, using log to base 10. Doesn't matter which log we use, we use it again. <coughs> because it doesn't tell us what power we're raising things to. Uh, we could have done the log to base a, you know, because that's a to the thing. That's what I would do. Log to base a. Maybe wasting Then if you change your log to base A to log to base 10 using change of base formula, you'd end up with the same formula at the end anyway. 
anyway, let's see if we can follow what they're doing here. So we've got locked at base 10 of both sides, which is all well and good. Um, so we have locked at base 10. Then we're not. Oh, divided by log to base A. Both sides. Okay, yeah. We're dividing both sides by log to base A. Now, uh, log base 10 of A. And that puts it underneath here. Equals KT, which is that remnant left over. Which we then divide by K, K which gives us that ugly looking formula. Um, if we'd done it in log to base A, it would have been a, a simple formula. <laughs> Let's try it. Let's do that in log to base A. Here we have. Let's switch colours. Let's get the red. We have y equals y naught a to the power of kt, and we're trying to get that rearranged in order of t. All right, we get rid of our y, so y over y naught equals a to the power of kt. Now, we're going to treat that the same as this, and we're going to say <coughs> our capital A is our, this is our A, kt is our n, and this is our x. All right, now we're going to rewrite it in this format. So log to the base A of x equals kt. And what we're trying to do is get t, so t equals One over k times log to the base a of y over y naught. <clears throat> now, had we gone the next step, which is change the base and change to the base 10, we would end up with this one the same one. That's basically what we've done. But I like my solution. I think it's nice. All right, we know how to change bases anyway. You just divide that by the, the other one. And here we go with this last one here. We're trying to get P1. So P1 is the one at the bottom. <coughs> so dividing by 10, first of all, get rid of that 10 out the way. And we had log to base 10 of that stuff. <coughs> so uh, we're doing the reverse of log to base 10, which is 10 to the power of. So 10 to the power of G on 10 equals P0 over P1. So what happened in those steps? That equals log. So we're really just doing this one again. So the first one is in this order: log to the base a 10, log to base 10 of x p1 over p0, not p0 over p1, equals n g on 10. So x, which is p0 over p1, equals 10 to the power of G over G, uh, G over 10. So that's this. All right, now we're ready to um, clean up the rest of it. So get rid of your P1. Because we, oh, we're trying to get P1. So put P1 on that side, put the other one on that side. Yeah. P1 is that thing. So you notice um, all of those, we basically are just using our definition of logarithm, this thing. You need to know this form. You need to know how to apply it. Just keep doing it the way I've shown. You, you should be able to identify which one's the logarithm, which one's the power. So this is switching from power to logarithms or switching from logarithms to power. Definitely the most important piece of information that you need in this, uh, in this topic. And when you see an equation, you should be able to identify which way do I have to switch. So here I can see a logarithm. Here I can see a power, power. All right, logarithms, logarithms. So you know which way you have to switch. You have to switch from here to here or switch from here to here. 
that's a good place to stop today. So, introduction to logarithms. We'll continue that next week, and hopefully, I'll get some quiz up and we can play with that as well. Um, but definitely, the most important formulas in this topic are the definition of a logarithm, this one here, and change of base. As well as your uh, your logarithm being the, the reverse of a power. So if you take a logarithm of a power, you get the indices out. That's it.